Ciao, buongiorno a tutti. Io sono Ginger Lee da Austin, Texas. Tu stai guardando Austin Artists. You want me to say that in English? Hey, everybody, I'm Ginger Lee, musician from Austin, Texas, and you are watching Austin Artists. A typical day for me is, is, is quite extensive. Um, it's probably one of the most difficult parts of, of my position here that you know I've kind of grown into and that's going to start a couple hours before lunch um, you know 9 10 a.m. and I'll come in and I'll make my rounds you know we've got everything from um, our Tejas restaurant to our 125 coffee bar um, to all of our banquets and catering and meetings um, all those facilities as well as Carillon restaurant and then on top of that you have, have Gabriel's as well so it's, it's, it's a lot of different outlets it's a lot of square footage and um, I've actually worn a pedometer before on a slower day and cleared over 12 miles. So it's a big building and that's, and that's before 5 o'clock. So it's a big building and in terms of my rounds, you know, I'm, I'm doing everything from checking with all the sous chefs, making sure the food's not only um, accurate and, and up, to, up to standards, but um, getting delivered on time and, and uh, checking with our banquet managers, all of our outlet managers from a front of the house perspective to make sure they have the proper tools in place to ensure their success as well. So that's pretty much from 10 to say 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And then about 1 to 2 o'clock, 1 to 3 o'clock, we uh, typically hold all of our, our meetings in house that we want to, um, any areas that we need to address or go revisit from the day's happenings. And then we transition into, the, into, into our dinner crowd. Now that's, that's not only the Carillon Restaurant New American Grill, but that's all of our banquets and catering. Um, we do have an executive sous chef and a banquet chef to head up those departments, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's my responsibility to make sure those things are uh, executed in a flawless nature. You know, people need to be very ambitious um, if they want to be successful. And I think that even when I was very young in, in, this, in this field, you know, 16 years old, I was, I was very, very hungry, very ambitious. And, you know, you need to be careful how quickly you do rise because you need to make sure that, you know, you, you pick up all the necessary information along the way. Um, that being said, around my early 20s, I was a bit cautious because I was offered a lot of things in terms of this manage management role or that management role. And um, one of my mentors, William Koval, um, the ex-executive uh, chef of the Adolphus Hotel, said, you know, listen, you want to be careful. You know, you're very hungry, you're very knowledgeable, and you, and, and you, and you want to grow, but you need to be careful on how fast you grow. So I kind of put the brakes on a, a little bit in my early 20s and then moved to Austin and really found a home at the Driscoll Hotel. Um, you know, being there for eight years, uh, uh, six of those with David Bull, and, you know, he was a terrific mentor, and, and we did a lot of great things together. I think passion's got to be number one, first and foremost, without a doubt. If you're not in love with what you're doing, if you're not, um, you know, completely uh, consumed with what you're doing, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be where you need to be. That's that's got to be number one overall. Uh, second's got to be the organization. Um, if you're not, if you don't have your mise en place, everything in place, um, not only from a food standpoint, but from a management management standpoint, and from an overall crew standpoint, you're never going to be successful either. And thirdly is going to be sense of urgency. You know, you can't teach a sense of urgency. You just can't. And if you don't have that snap, as we like to call it, um, you're not going to get uh, things out on time and in an orderly fashion. You know, I'm, I'm going to lean back to the sense of urgency. You know, whenever hiring staff, that's the first thing I look for. Um, and, and the reason I say that is, again, because you can't really teach that. It's, it's either innate or it's not. You know, I'd rather have somebody that's, that's fresh out of culinary school, that's very, very, again, hungry um, and eager to, to, to learn, excel, and grow um, because I can teach you how to make crepes. I can teach you how to make hollandaise the way that we want to make it. Um, what I can't teach is how quickly you get the mise en place together. You know, your, your, your own actions and how quickly you kind of um, adapt to your own surroundings and just really kind of bring that urgency to the team.
You know, I've actually teetered on this subject back and forth in terms of how important professional training is. Um, if you would have asked me that question, you know, two, three years ago, I would have said, absolutely not, without question, do not get formally trained. Go and pinpoint uh, the chef that you want to work for and go and learn from them. Um, but I've gone back on that a little bit over the past couple of years just because of, um, you know, the amount of people that uh, I've come across that don't know the basic core, uh, both techniques and terminology, those two things. Um, it's, it's really important to, to, to possess not only those core items, but um, to really be up to par with the rest of the people in the industry that are, that are starting out. You know, it's, it's so competitive these days. There's so many people going to culinary school. The culinary schools are processing a lot of people, on the other hand, too. So the quality that you get um, isn't always up to standard. Uh, it's like any other business school. You know, it, until you've been out in the real world and actually, you know, seen it and faced it in the eye and been successful at doing it, then you really haven't done it. So that's why I, I go back and forth on it. So I'm, I'm, I'm going back to formally trained is, is important. Um, but you still have to possess those real world kind of hands on. You know, in terms of culinary trends, I think that, you know, probably about five years ago, uh, molecular gastronomy hit its peak. And, and in terms of, you know, it, the majority of it came from Ferran Adria in, in, in Spain. And we had a lot of great players here in the U.S. doing some tremendous things in, in Chicago. And I think now, you know, being at that peak was about five years ago, things are getting a lot more simplistic. Um, true simplicity, techniques, execution, and product sourcing and product, uh, product quality are, are probably what's being focused on the most. Um, because you don't need 18 ingredients on a plate. You don't need three sauces on a plate. If you, if you have, if you have Poussin, you have free range Poussin, you need to elevate that Poussin and let it speak for itself and what naturally goes with, with your ingredients and what's going to allow them to speak for themselves. And that level of simplicity is definitely what I think food is today and will be for a while. You know, um, my first job cooking, I was, I was 15 years old. I was uh, flipping burgers, dropping fryer baskets at what used to be the pier on Lake Austin, here in Austin. And at that point, it was, it was, it was a summer job. Um, it was, you know, uh, some of my friends worked there. And, and, and then it, it, it transitioned over to being a bit of an adrenaline rush. So it's, it's how many orders can you take, how fast can you cook them, how well can you cook them. But at the end of the day, how well can you cook a burger um, at that level anyways uh, in the first place? So I went on and, and, and worked to some other places in Austin. And again, it was the adrenaline. It was the adrenaline. And, and you know, I played sports going through high school. And it was just uh, how much can you take? Put me in the game, coach. Let's go. Let's go. And those would be my chefs, you know, kind of in their roles. And, you know, then I, I started to try to switch plates around. And whether it be presentation on a dessert or presentation on, on an entree. And uh, I kind of got criticized for it by some, some corporate folk. And I said, you know what? I'm finished. I'm going to go to culinary school. So I went to the California Culinary Academy in San Francisco, and that's where I think that I truly fell in love with food, um, where my passion was, was really, really drawn in tightly and neatly to where it needs to be in terms of, again, the ingredients. I mean, Northern California in the first place, you know, whether it be produce or seafood or, you know, cheeses or, or whatever it may be. I mean, it's probably one of the best places, at least in my opinion, that you can be in the country in, in terms of, of overall food quality and ingredients. So that, um, that passion was really, you know, cultured, if you will, there. And it really provided a, uh, a springboard for, for myself, my knowledge, my career, my experience. You know, I've, I've, I've got the cliche, you know, my mom had me in the kitchen growing up, you know, cooking. But uh, it's truth. I, I mean, for me it was. I was, I was raised in, in the kitchen and from when I was, you know, yay big. My mom would throw five ingredients at me and I'd mix them up. They might not come out like anything anyone would want, everyone would want to eat, but nonetheless, I'd be sitting on the counter playing with flour and sugar and, and things of that nature. Now, whether she did that in order to keep me busy, uh, I, I still don't know, but um, I think that's where it started. You know, um, Austin's quickly becoming very competitive. When I first came here, um, I guess for the second time, if you will, 10 years ago, 
there was only a handful of people that were that were players in in the the food and beverage industry here in in Austin, and you know through all our sustainable movements, through all of our local farms, um, through all the hotels coming to town, um, through Austin growing in in the fast fashion that it has, you know that level has 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 been elevated very much so. So. You know what, we're not quite a San Francisco, a Chicago, a New York by any means, but we've come a long, long way and now instead of a handful of people, you've got probably 20 people that are, are really bringing you know, strong things to the table and really making Austin you know, what it is today from a dining experience.